What is going on, everyone? It's LFC Transfer Room here, and whew, we're getting closer to Premier League football. It's nearly back, um, and we can nearly enjoy watching Liverpool players again. Uh, I'm joined today by Demo and Drew. Demo, how are you doing? All right. Um, a bit tired with this uh, international football. I'm bored of it, to be honest. We haven't seen our team for like three or four weeks, have we now? With the suspensions and then watching that crap last night, then... Yeah, we're back on Saturday, so yeah, smile, all smiles for me. And Drew, I mean, Darwin got one for for Uruguay. Um, a great header crossed in, you know. He finally Liverpool had a player that could cross the ball, eh? Yeah, Suarez. Um, we'll see what happens there, but um, yeah, it's good he gets goals. Um, you know, one definitely hoping for more, but get his confidence up, get him back in the team. Just get them up and running. So anything that contributes to that, I'm happy to see. Uh, less happy to see international games in general. Like Damon, I took a kind of vacation myself while they were on whatever was a Nations League tournament now. Just seems like a bit of fluff to make it seem like it has some meaning. But uh, happy to have the Premier League back this weekend. How about yourself? Well, yeah, I, it infuriates me international football. <laughs> Because they've built this tournament that means nothing, that we've been relegated from, that we don't care about, to demonstrate that we're an elite level team, which we're not, because obviously we got relegated, and it's all just a bit of a sham for me. Um, I mean, I'm it's not going to do. It's too making Fenlers into a, a little money business, isn't it? That's what it is. Because they're going to be. Yeah. I'm not going to go too much into England because this is LFC transfer room, but Jamie Carragher put a really interesting tweet out there. He, he sent a tweet out, which I think it was, was it the 2017 or 2014 team? And how many players would get in? And we're talking about Rio Ferdinand, John Terry, Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, Michael Owen, David Beckham, all these players lining up and we're looking at who's currently playing and we go, well, actually, are we an elite level team? And the answer is probably no. But, and there's a big but here, and this kind of segues us into what we're going to start the discussion about. If you ask anyone in world football, Ballon d'Or, any grading, you uh, Champions League team of the year, there is one person who plays right back in every single other nation's team. If they ask who is the best right back in the world, every single one says Trent. So why, for the love of God, doesn't he start or play for England? Now, I'm more Liverpool than England, and, you know, I don't really care about internationals, but it's Trent I feel sorry for. He's been turned into this pawn of attacking football versus defensive football behind a player who has worse tackling stats than him in Reese James and Carl Walker. So why on earth is he a worse defensive player? Can anyone make sense of this? And, you know, please put it in the chat or anything like that. Someone explain to me what is what Trent lacks that wouldn't make a significant improvement to England because the rest of the world believe he's the best right back in the world. It's just United and Chelsea fans that have a problem with him. What's going on, Damon? Stop okay. I think I think is it's like he's using Trent to say, hey, "Look, I'm proving a point here," but then he's, he's not really understanding what he's doing. He's contradicting everything he's going against. He's come out with a with a thing just saying, "Like, our oh, Trippier's playing amazing at the moment. Reese James is one of the best right backs in the world at the moment. The way he's playing, yeah, Trent's not playing well, but he hasn't been like this for five years. It was, you know, it was arguably the best right back in the world." For three, four years, it's running. No one was close to him. He still didn't get picked. So if it, so based on that though, if it's going on for him, fair enough. Trent being dropped. But why is Maguire and Shaw in there? Why is Mings getting picked all the time? <laughs> I there's something. I, I think it's just Southgate. It's a bit like Oliver Solskjaer, where he has his favourites, and it really it, he has that defensive plan, and he relies on those players. And if they do play well for him. He'll play him again. No matter what form they are in the league, he'll play well again. And he's exposed 
when it comes to when it comes to big teams, as soon as England plays someone half decent, it's exposure. Italy, Croatia, it's the same thing again. And the reason why he don't play Trent is because I don't think he knows how to use him. Because, like I said, he's, he's not he's not tactically aware. He doesn't know how to use Trent because he can't use Trent as a back five because he wants to be defensive. Does 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 uh, Southgate? And Trent's not but, defensive. Well, not, well, yeah. Yeah, if you're playing a back yeah. five, you're right. You're yeah, perfect, back, know, not defensive. I know. I, know. I, th I think it's the most defensive back five I've ever seen in my life. It's not in win backs, is it? It's just it's just right back, left back, and then a back three. So I, I think Trent would be wasted under Southgate. I, I feel sorry for Trent in terms of that. That's his professional career. That's his personal. You know, he's dreamed of being in the England team. And what more can he do than to, to play the World Cup than do what he has done? Is is dragged the Liverpool team sometimes to you know that Premier League top five of the year when we, we had all those injuries it was yeah. Salah and Trent but what what do what do we know so I've got no modern us clearly Drew to some degree it reminds me of um you know and we'll go way back here reminds me of the Robbie Fowler days Robbie Fowler was just unreal and everyone knew it he, he could finish from anywhere. He was just absolute destroyer of opportunities. You know, he scored goals for fun for Liverpool. However, the difference being in front of Robbie Fowler was Les Ferdinand, Alan Shearer, uh, you know, world Andy Cole, world class strikers playing at the absolute top of their game in the top European competitions, scoring goals left, right, and centre. You know, Robbie Fowler would get 28, Les Ferdinand would get 27, Alan Shearer would get 32. You know, these were cracking strikers. People are comparing themselves to Trent, but Trent's third on the all-time list of defender assists. How can people compare? Yeah, it's a bit confusing from the outside. Uh, I think, you know, you and Damon covered it pretty much. For me, the biggest thing is you're playing a back five and you're not you know, right wing back, left wing back. Those should be predominantly forward thinking players, which is carved perfectly for Trent. And then when you think about England as a team, it's probably weakest, what, center back and uh, in center back category and midfield probably. I guess you got Declan Rice there um, who's been, you know, championed as the, you know, center mid, but it's like there's so many more forward options that it doesn't make sense to set up the team defensively when that's probably your weakest point in the team. I mean, case in point was yesterday's game when, you know, Harry Maguire had his mistakes and then we are what we saw that. Harry Maguire you know, England, had his mistakes. <laughs> but like, he, like England he somehow claw back. I rolled off the top so, didn't it? Well, there we go. Uh, but England somehow clawed back. Substitutions were well. Saka came on brilliantly. Mount finished. Like you saw, uh, surprise, surprise, there were attacking changes where England's strongest players are, are there. That's the strongest place they have to pull from. And then three minutes later, <clears throat> England concedes. It's, it's clear that their defense is not the best uh like what should be focused on in the team and it just it, it's going to be interesting to see how england sets up in the group because they are expected they're the the top team in that group but are they going to play defensively if they set up the way they do then that's you know that's how they're going to play the game and it'll be quite hilarious to see the teams uh, usa wales and iran possibly you know make england look uh, fools of themselves and It'd be interesting to see how that group goes, but I can only see it. It just reminds me of basically every time we've seen England play. It's like if they don't get a good draw, then they get embarrassed. And it, it, whatever like hoodoo jinx is on them, they can't seem to get it right. But for me, it goes back to what Damon says with Southgate. And I think of if Southgate, I foreseeably see that Southgate's not going to go on past this tournament for England who's going to pick him up as manager? And if the answer is not any of the top six, then what is he doing managing England? I think uh, Damon said it before too, Ali is the comparison. Uh, Gunnar Solskjaer, uh, that seems perfect to me. It seems like he's set his ways and he's just going to die by them at the end of the day. 
Yeah, I always believe you should build a team around your best players. And England's best players are Harry Kane, Phil Foden and Trent Alexander-Arnold. That, that For me, that is it. So you make space for... You put Harry Kane up front, you let Phil Foden have a free roll and try and sort of interlink everything and get it in. And you get Trent smashing the ball onto Harry Kane's forehead. And you build the rest of the team around what is, in essence, your strongest things. And, and what people are saying here in the chat is... The teams have been built around Harry Maguire and his ability to head a ball out of a box. I'm sorry, I'm 6'2". I can head a ball out of the box, but and I'm quicker than Harry Maguire, and I'm 38. It's, it's, it seems to be a whole range of mistakes. And I think for me, I don't care whether England win the World Cup. I truly don't. I enjoy watching Brazil. I enjoy watching attacking football. I enjoy watching people have a go. And that's not what England do. They sit back and hope that they can get one on the break. And I'm sorry, I don't support Burnley. You know, it doesn't excite me. And I think probably Sean Dice is the next logical option for England, which is just depressing. But he probably would pick Trent because, you know, he loves a long ball. I think we're now at the stage, aren't we, where something needs to change on that side of things for our want for that player. But for Liverpool, we need to sort of start to think about how we're going to sort ourselves out. Because we had a bad start. But Jürgen's had a bit of time now, hasn't he, Damon? I think we we had a long chat, I think, on a Friday about all the tactical sort of errors and where they've been moving Trent and how they've been moving Salah more wide and stuff like that. They've had a good time to look at it now. What are you expecting from Liverpool when we come back? Just a bit of attacking flair and a bit of desire. I think that that's what we've been lacking more than anything. The desire, desire from the players that is not Trent. Like I know he's been poor, like in terms of performance, but it's, it's a desire to get to the ball. Sometimes I know we've just been boosting him up to get to the England team, but mm. there's some games where he just he hadn't looked bothered getting back at times, and it's like this is this is supposed to be a scouser that's in our team. You think anyone that is going to play from the shirt? And really run back. It's going to be Trent and put his put his effort in. So that's what I want to see from on, on Saturday is desire and a little bit of flair because we've got the flair up front. We've got Diaz. We've got Salah. We've got Elliot fit. We've got Thiago fit. We need to see a little bit of, of something. I think I think it's the perfect game as well against Brighton. I think we just lost Potter. That, I don't know what to make of Brighton now without Potter. I also don't know what to make. I don't know what to. I don't, usually, I, I, when we come up against Brighton, I think oh we're going to have a good attacking football team against us here, but. It's a tricky one. I don't know what to make of that. I still think we'll we should win comfortably, but it starts from from there before it starts from there, doesn't it? So let's just see. You wouldn't tactically expect them to change too much, and and this isn't a Brighton preview. But Drew, what do you want to see from Liverpool when when we when we're back in action when we sort of back in the Premier League? Uh, Damon hit the nail on the head for me. Just desire, like you saw when we came out. Uh, against Bournemouth and when we turned them over 8-0 it was just everybody was you know payback was the word of the day kind of thing or revenge like you know trying to like go again and basically make up for the mistakes of the previous unfortunately that's been like the word that's been used time and time again after we've slipped up so I'd like to see it start with desire and for me belief like it, it just too many times are we second like just second off from the start of the game like how many games in a row where we go behind first like that kind of stat is the one that worries me it's it's almost like and Damon said it again where it's players just kind of go about it's like lackadaisical almost it's like oh we'll get it done and then they score and it's like okay now it's time we really start trying but I think the fact that we're getting a lot of our players back from injury definitely helps um, you know, Tiago goes without saying, let's see how long we can keep him fit, but that's a, just a completely different team when he's in the side. I think a big one is Jota being fit. I think Nunez definitely has to, it's obvious that Nunez is the future of the club in terms of that forward position, but 
think having so much pressure on him to come and perform right away wasn't the healthiest environment for him. I think you have a player like Holland who comes in and just absolutely demands that he's the center focus. But I think Klopp more often than not eases players into the team. It's only like the random player like Diaz or, you know, Salah that comes in and, you know, just slots in right away. But with all the, you know, as you two were talking about the other Friday, Friday, like the system changes, the personnel, like different directions there. It's going to take time for that to work out. But I think the less pressure that's placed on Nunez, the more likely he's able to get you know, an opportunity to show what he can do. Um, but yeah, it comes, starts with desire. I want to see consistency, belief more than anything in themselves as a team. And I'm excited to see the depth and squad coming back. So we'll have more than one or two you know, edges of the sword to uh, strike teams down. And again, Brighton should be, a, I think it'll be a tough game, but I think it should be a good one to build confidence. Yeah, and I think what, one of the things that's really pleased me, and I know there's been a few reports about Arthur Mello and, and whether it was him or Zakira and all the different media noise that happened um, that we've all talked about sort of on our, on our chat groups. But what really pleases me, Damon, is he just went, I am going to work to be part of the, I He made a conscious decision to try and get part of this team, hasn't he? Like he's trained with the under-23s, he's played games, he's got himself involved. Whether we wanted Arthur Mello, whether he was a last-minute panic, whether he was anything like that, the guy has shown he wants to be here, hasn't he? That's exactly how he's going to win the fans over as well, because, if you know... First and foremost, like like we've been saying, it's desire, and that desire to he cancelled his holidays to make sure he's up to fitness. Is you know he's put every single work work in. If he's not good enough, he's not good enough. That's not his fault. But we can't we can't scrutinise him because at the end of the day, he's, he's not he's, he's not asked to come in in terms of you know he's he's been offered a, a chance at Liverpool. Everyone's everyone's going to take that, and he's putting his work in. So we've got to give him that chance now. Next couple of games, see what he's like. I think, like I say, we've got. Some tough fixtures coming up. We've got 13 mm-hmm. matches in the next like six weeks, so he's going to get some game time. Whether it be Derby in the cup or in Champions against Rangers, he's going to get some game time. So we're going to see what he's like in there. I, based on Arthur's stats, Drew, you know he's like, and I think I, I said this when we signed him. I, I referred to him as an Aldi version of Thiago. Which is it sounds harsh, but an Aldi version of Tiago is, you know, it's still a Wagyu steak, isn't it? It's just you bought it from Aldi as opposed to from, you know, MS. If he can be available, consistent, seven out of ten, six, seven out of ten when he plays, that that's all he needs, isn't it, for, for this season, for us to be happy with what he's bringing to the table. Yes, he needs to do something a little bit more for us to want him to sign full-time, but that's what we need from him, isn't it? Be available, perform at 6, 7 out of 10. Yeah, 100%. And you said the key for me, it's if he's the closest we have to – um, deputizing for Tiago, then that's a huge asset for the club. Like he needs to perform to those levels. But we were saying in the first, was it six, six weeks of the season, how much we miss Tiago and to have a player come in who could potentially, you know, not reach his levels, but give us the same sort of outlet in the midfield. That's, that's huge for the club. And like Damon said, the desire that he's showing, that's going to win fans over. For me, I, I don't understand players' mentality when they don't come in and just go all for it. It's like that's what the fans love to see. You see like a youngster come in. I remember when uh, Nico Williams came in, I think his first few cup appearances, like he just gave it his all. It was like 110% flying into challenges, chasing lost causes, but just putting it all on the line, and that's – you know, that's what gets crowds fired up and that's what gives you some confidence and momentum. This is a free shot for him to turn his career around and he's going to get opportunities to play. This is all on him and sees that opportunity and to see him work when he could be on vacation. That's, you know, that's, that's good signs to hopefully see him play a role, a big role in this uh, season going forward. 
Yeah, and we've got some people that are putting some rumours in chat, and we are going to do a, a, a little section towards the end where we'll talk about any of your rumours. So if you have got something that you want to put in chat, I've seen um, the Depay Firmino swap um, and a couple of others. I, I know um, Nunes Scott. So if there is something that you want us to uh, the Cater Jude swap rumours and stuff, and we will get to some of your rumours. As long as you put them in the chat, then we can obviously we can ghost them. But... Moving on to, I guess, you know, we're, we're LFC transfer room. The key is in the word transfer here. We like to have a look towards the summer. And now we're starting to build our dream midfield, you know, with the rumours that are going on. We're only linked to every single midfielder across Europe. So it's absolutely fine. It's probably to be expected. But Conrad Lime has just come out recently and said that he's always been a Liverpool fan. Now he's available for a freebie which is very up Liverpool Street, very up Juve Street, a lot more than us. You know, Italy are experts at freebies. But if we're going to spend big on a central midfielder who, you know, I don't think we could, we're allowed to say his name anymore just because it's getting boring. Um, a free midfielder such as Conrad Lima would be a perfect addition, wouldn't he, Damon? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'd take him at 20, 20 30 million, 40 million. But for free, that's just an absolute bargain. And that's, like you said, that's right, over FSG Street, so why not? And if he's a Liverpool fan, he's, he's, he's talented. He's a very talented lad. Absolutely. He can drive from midfield, and that's exactly what we're missing at the moment. I know we've got Elliot, but I don't think Elliot's a proper centre midfielder as such. Like I said, I said the other day, he's, he's more of a number 10 or a winger. Um, Lema is different. He's a, he's a proper centre mid with an attacking mind, but can also defend as well which is brilliant that's exactly what we're missing and to get him for free someone that talented for free I mean well, you, you could eat if they get knocked out of Champions League are they in the Champions League Leipzig uh, yeah I think so if yeah. they get knocked out you can always put in a cheeky £10 million bid in, in January yeah. Right? yeah they'd be happy to receive anything wouldn't they at that point so yeah um, why not I mean there's someone else that we could go for in January couldn't they so Let's just. I think let's let's see. Let's see what happens for the rest of the season. Like I said, I've, I'm like you, James. I'm sick of mentioning his name. I've wrote about fucking sixty articles on him like in the last two weeks. I'm I'm bored of typing his name. To be honest. So, um, Cameron Lehmann. It's nice to hear. It's, it's like the password memory now, isn't it? Just. <laughs> da, 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 da. I feel like I'm writing the same sentences. I've got to keep thinking of different sentences. In it's the same story. But yeah. Um, Cameron Lehmann, it's nice to have someone different be linked to, especially someone as talented as Lehmann. I think he's definitely one. I mean, you got to bite someone's hand off for that, a free transfer for him. You got, you're laughing, so yeah, I hope we do go for him. Now, it sounds like it, it'd be a shocking, shocking thing for Leipzig to lose him, but they've had him for, they bought him for seven mil. They, they've not exactly, he came in in 2020. It's, they've not broke the bank on him, but he's a 25-year-old Austrian, 20 caps, all constantly available. I mean, they, there's a lot of sense in this, but with someone like this, there's got to be a lot of interest. So we've got to make our move early, don't we? True. Yeah, we definitely have to come out strong. Um, too many times we've kind of been passive in the market or, you know, waited for the right buy. And we're past that point uh, where we're going to lose potentially three midfielders this summer in the likes of Ox, Keita, and Milner. And the midfield hasn't had like a proper refresh in a long time. The likes of Elliot and Carvalho, they're teenagers. And to put the amount of responsibility that we already are on Elliot's back is, is kind of shocking that we haven't, you know, we, we've all gone over this argument before. It's like we should have expected the majority of our midfield to get injured. It just was unfortunate. It was all at one time, but getting the likes of Lamer and like, that's the exact age you want, you know, 25 years old Klopp can bring him up to the next level. You know, we've seen it done before years ahead um injuries look injury record looks good like everything that he brings to the team is what our players who are constantly injured and unavailable uh 
what we wanted them to do. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. And it's far past the time where we need to rectify those mistakes. And just in general, we need a squad refresh in that area where the majority of our midfielders are 30 years old or, or older. So it makes perfect sense. And as for your question of we need to, you know, we can't let this one pass us by. Uh, the fact that he comes out and says he's a Liverpool fan, it's a, it's a no-brainer. It's, okay, it's come and sign me and let's not, Let's not muck this one up. No, I'll get I'll get to your request soon, Daniel. Absolutely fine. I'll, I'll make sure that I activate that. But one of the weird links, Damon, was Inky Williams came out and said it's nice when clubs like Liverpool try to sign you and stuff like that. And, and he's a good player. Don't get me wrong. He's very quick. He, he was able to score goals. But I think it was must have been about five years ago when he was 19 we were interested in him. It's just... Is he just trying to drum up some interest so that he can get a better contract? Is it one of those, I'm going to throw Liverpool's name out to try and get... It is a weird one, isn't it? It is a weird... That's come from left field, that. Like like you said, about five, five, six years ago, we were linked with him. I don't know why he's come out of it now. Like you said, he could be get his new contract. It could be just get interest from other clubs because as soon as Liverpool come knocking, you know what? You know, other clubs are like copying Liverpool recently. They look at Liverpool, they look at Liverpool scouting. Chelsea, it was one. They saw Liverpool going for Werner and said, we'll have some of that. Liverpool scouting is one of the best in the world. So if, if you know Liverpool's interested in Williams, they're going to think, oh, he must be a decent player. Let's go for him. They don't even need to do their own scouting at this rate. We're just looking at Liverpool's. But yeah, I don't know what it, I don't know what he said for. Whether it, it's definitely for something in terms of money because it, whether it's a, a new contract or for other interested clubs, it's just for our name out there and it's just for, because we're, we're Liverpool. And that's it. I don't think we're interested in the last two years. So I don't worry about that too much in the next couple of years. Now I'm gonna we're gonna go over to some of the um rumors the the guys were putting in chat. Um and just sort of get some reactions on things and just see what people think. Can Patchy put this Drew thoughts on the Cater Jude swap deal rumors? Do you think there's any chance of this? I don't think there's a chance anyone in the world wants to sign Naby Keita at the moment, He's, unless you're a medical professional. What do you think? Yeah, that just seems baffling as well with his contract situation. It's like, why would you include that in a swap deal when he's out of contract come summer? Um, just doesn't make any sense. Um, maybe we force their hand in January and try to sweeten the deal, being like, you know, we'll give you something to replace him with now and we'll be the first in with the sizable bid. And, you know, this makes sense for all parties kind of thing, but it just given his, his history and his track record of injuries, it, um, I wouldn't put any money on him. It just almost kind of reminds me of a uh, Jack, uh, Jack wheelchair uh, back in his arsenal days when it just, his body deteriorated and, um, no, it's just I don't. You were on about then, but yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> Jack wheelchair, Jack wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's my favorite. Oh, Jack nickname. wheelchair probably works with him, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. it's good. I like it. <laughs> but yeah, like, was he on Bournemouth and West Ham and all those times, and he never played a game, like pretty much. And it it almost seems to me like uh, Kate is heading in that direction, uh, where he's never going to be available. It's just going to be a drain on player wages, and I wouldn't pay any money on that. And for a top club as well, that doesn't seem it doesn't seem like he's earned a top club move at this point in his career and what he's shown uh unfortunate for him because it, for me it's all down to injuries for the most part but um yeah that that rumor makes no sense to me Damo, another another one from uh Kempachi, which is any truth on the bobby de pay swap again it's another one that seems a bit weird to me but I can see more legs in that than Dortmund wanting Naby Keita. I can see it, but I can see it for last summer rather than the next. Mm. Like I think it made some. I think it made more sense last summer, especially when we just lost Mane and Taki and Origi. We needed that sort of another attacking player that in that can play along the front line rather than just on the up front line for me. No. Um, next season, I think we'll look at younger players. If I'm honest, I think. He's a brilliant player, Dubai. Don't get me wrong. I think I think he's got the potential to be really, really good. The right, right team, right manager, right, you know, right place to be at. I think he's a decent player, but I think that I think we're gone with that. I think that was last summer. 
that deal. Uh, next summer, I think we'll just look for someone youngster, like Sesco or someone like that. Now, Drew and Dicko here says Lema Casado and the the player whose name we can't say anymore um, would be the dream. Now, for me, I think Casado's nailed on to go to Chelsea now. Um, but do you think would that be if that was our summer? Would you be a happy chap? I'd be yeah, I'd be happy because three new midfielders in who have a long future at the club, uh, replacing three exits. Um, I think realistically the price tags minus Lamer potentially on a free, but Caicedo's just you know, his transfer fee just seems exorbitant. Same with Bellingham, to be honest, but I'd be more willing to take a punt on him uh, at the moment. But um, yeah, uh, Dan's got me a little... This is just like vacation growth. I was on vacation. No, but what but... we want, Drew, what we want, mm -hmm. right? So when we get to 7,000, I want a full handlebar that goes into sideburns with everything else taken away. Shit. For the quiz. The mutton chops. The mutton yeah. chops. All right, I'll, I'll do that for the quiz for sure. I have to shave for Halloween, but, um, you know, three weeks later, it will be back. But... Um, back to the midfield, which I think oh, yeah. is, you know, the more pressing situation. I can always uh, grow a beard back in a few weeks. It doesn't seem likely Liverpool can get back in the market for midfielders when we need them. Um, see, I, I we need at least one huge signing, whether that be the the player who must not be maimed or Barella. Like we need someone of that elk, and then we need two more. If uh, Lamer can come in as a nailed on, it's starting to seem like that could be the case. That's the exact perfect second person we should buy, and then Caicedo for his abilities and his prospects of the future. I'm I'm game for that. I just don't see us spending that much money at that point. Um, it's but yeah, if as as far as the question goes, would I be happy that summer? Yeah, I'd be happy. And Demo, last one for you. We've got Tielemans, Douglas, Luis, and Lena are all free after this season. Of those three, which would you want to see Liverpool sign? Uh, I, I think I'd go Lema. Just, just. I think Tielemans. I think the agent the only side Tielemans is only going to get older. I know it'd have been brilliant last summer. It's better. I think it'd have been better, better than Arthur, but. I would go Lema. I think Conor Lema is just, I think, just a little bit more, a little bit more spice in him than the other two. And Douglas Weiss is a brilliant player as well. I just don't think it'd pick up trees at Liverpool. I think Cameron Lema is someone to really shine under clock. So yeah. Douglas Louise reminds me a bit of Charlie Adam. Takes a few good corners and suddenly he's a world beater. Well, if yeah. To be honest. Uh, Charlie Adam's free kicks, wasn't it? At Blackpool, that's yeah. what it was. Charlie Adam's were messy at Blackpool, though. To be honest. There's a reason why we did sign him in the end, but I think we were all stoked when we signed him to be honest. So we thought, oh, we've got a decent midfielder, it's got extra Gerard, but then no, we, we should have stuck with Jay Spearing. Yeah, well, if you what did I don't know if you watched the Legends game, guys, but I, I was watching it, watching Xabi Alonso just put on a clinic, thinking to myself, that has to be the worst thing Rafa Benitez has ever thought of in his life, which is I need to sell Alonso and buy Gareth Barry because I need a right foot and a left foot, which is what Charlie Adams was. Because Alonso is just different gravy at passing the ball, and he was absolutely unreal in that Legends game. So it's, it's like he could still play now, even though he never had pace. Um, but just to summarise, because we're, we're going to pull it to, to an end, if you are new here, please like and subscribe to the channel which is a fan channel made for you. We do videos every day at 7.30, so if you can join us, we would very much appreciate it. Um, we think Southgate's odd, um, and we have no idea why Trent isn't in the starting lineup, seeing as he would, you know, as, as Dan put in chat, Barker want him in their starting lineup, but England don't want him in theirs. Liverpool want him in theirs. For some reason, the most pragmatic manager in world football in Southgate doesn't believe that a player who has better defensive stats than the player that he's playing is a good enough defender for his team. His decision, Conrad Leimer, 
let's get you signed up on a contract in January, pre-contract, let's get you to Liverpool in the summer, let's get it done. If you're a Liverpool fan, we're a fan of signing midfielders at this moment in time. Seems like a match made in heaven. Let's get it done. And as for Inke Williams, just stop trying to use our name to get yourself a little pay rise. We, we were interested in you in about 2019 when you had a few good games, but after then, you just sort of fallen off a cliff. This has been LFC Transfer Room. Thank you very much to Drew and Damon, and we will catch you on the next one. Take care.